directly on top of the table. South Melbourne were still in that position before yesterday, but unlike last time, Juventus had a lot more to gain. With one point between them, a win would put Juve on top. Your commentator is Laurie Schwab. Big chance for Juventus to go to the top of the ladder by beating South Melbourne today, whereas a South Melbourne victory would see them open up a three-point lead at the top. Midweek, South Melbourne lost 1-0 to Vasco da Gama of Brazil, and today they're playing without their ace playmaker, Oscar Crino. Before the match, we spoke to Juventus's goalkeeper, Jakobanovic, who became Australia's most expensive player when he transferred in 1980 to Derby County of England for $130,000. At Juventus, though, he finds he doesn't have much to do. It's a lot harder for a goalkeeper not to have much to do than to have uh, action-packed goal mouth because when, you, when you're when you in goals and there's ball flying all about, you know, it's mostly instinctive, so you don't have much time to think, so you're really doing a lot of things. But when you haven't got that much to do, your concentration has to be so much better because you might be called on to do just one thing in the game and if you're not ready for it, it's too late. Yeah. Well, what do you remember about the earlier game against South Melbourne, the 2-2 draw? I think we played fairly well. South Melbourne's a good team. They're a disciplined team and they've been together quite, uh, you know, for, what, two years now, basically the same squad. And Len McKendry is a good, good coach. I remember I was under him at Heidelberg and Victoria and the way he plays, he, uh, he demands discipline from the players. Uh, they had, I suppose, a little bit more of the play in the first game, but I thought at the same token we were a bit unlucky to, to lose that game because we were winning 2-1, uh, 15 minutes to go, it was through a bad mistake down the middle that cost us uh, the game, really. John Margaritis, has he come up with anything special for today? Not really, I don't think derby games tend to, uh, the players tend to think too much about the game and the opposition. I think if you just concentrate on your normal game and what you've done the week before, uh, and I think the team who does that today, the better, will win. After those words from Jakobanovic, let's have a look first at the South Melbourne team, and we see that Vlado Bojinovsky, number 15, replaces Oscar Crino. The Juventus lineup has Fabio Incantolupo on the bench, even though he played a leading part in the 2-0 victory over Preston Macedonia after coming on as a substitute last week. Our referee, Chris Bambridge, and Juventus kicking off. Last year, Juventus won the first game 2-1, and South Melbourne got revenge in the return game 1-0. Steve Blair on the ball. The tall South Melbourne centre-back quickly closed down by Sweeney. He has to release the ball. And now John Eisendorn coming forward from the back. McDowell trying a through ball for Brown. It doesn't work, but yes, it does, because he got his shot well saved by Barnovich. Peter Lewis seemed uh, so much in control of that situation, but somehow Doug Brown got the ball back for that shot. And a uh, good reaction by Jakobanovic. Now, Peter Lewis is on the ball. He seems well in control, taken away from him by Brown, number 10. There's the shot and the save by Barnovich. Cullen, he's surrounded by two men. Uses Miranda again. Too high for Zinni. Alan Bowl is it? No. Lormitz just got to it. It was Bobby Russell who turned it back to Lormitz. Well wide of him, of course. It's Miranda sending the ball long. Now Zinni heads it on. There's the foot of Russell connecting and Lormitz scrambling back to knock it clear. Peterson. Blair gets it away from the danger area, but uh, only as far as Lewis. Miranda. Oh, a shot on the volley by Zinni. Coming in at the far post, but he puts it over the top. Peterson. Lewis. Eisenhorn coming at him, Lewis goes past him, he's lining up a shot here, and he puts it away. One nil to the Aventus. Lovely play by the fullback. A nice pass set it up for him from Peterson, but good footwork to get past Eisenhorn. And a great shot into the corner. Dow goes for the long one. 
McDowell. Back to Barnovich. Murphy coming away with the ball. McDowell. Egan flicks it on for Brown. Brown playing the one-two again. And there's the Egan. His 12th goal of the season. A series of one-twos with Buck Brown. Egan starts the move. Brown returns the compliment. Egan back onto it. You've got a touch. Charlie Egan withdrew from the national squad before the international series in controversial circumstances. Scored his 12th goal of the season. That's the halftime whistle, so Miranda didn't have a chance to throw the ball long into the area. And the final, the rather the half-time score, South Melbourne won, Juventus won. So the match finally balanced as we kick off the second half. John Eisendorn, South Melbourne sweeper. draw in this match uh, would suit Melbourne Croatia because if they win today they would draw closer to the two leaders. They're in third place before this uh, week's round. Taken away from him but uh, Holford gets it back. Brown. Lewis came charging in. Now McDowell. One-handed save by Barnovich. McDowell hit that. Set up by Doug Brown, number 10, for McDowell. One-handed save by Barnovich and Egan coming in on the uh, far post too late. Scored last week against Footscray. Nice pass out wide for Holford. Holford is at the side of the box, goes square. Eisendorf, great save by Barnovich. Unbelievable save. Holford, now he controls it very nicely, waits for the opportunity to cross. A one-handed save from Eisendorn by Barnovich. Bojinovsky. Eisendorn. Flicked on, here's McDowell inside the box. The Juventus defence doing well to close him down, crossed by Brown. Headed away by Brian Brown, and here's Murphy with a chance. Great save by Barnovich. That's a second miraculous save Yaka Barnovich has made. And there's the man who had the chance, Ken Murphy. Clearance by Brian Brown. Now the ball goes wide for Murphy. And a great save. Miranda. Sweeney, tackled from behind by Russell, brought down and gets the free kick. Peterson looks set to take it. Indeed he does, goes straight for goal. Now there's the magic of Mickey Peterson. He's got so much skill. Lines it up. And he curls it beautifully. So Mickey Peterson, who joined Juventus from Heidelberg early this year, has scored his fourth goal of the season, his eighth NSL goal overall. It's a pass to Russell going on the return board. He's past Blair as well. Sweeney waiting in the middle. And he's brought down heavily by Steve Blair. His head in pain. Bambridge wants to talk to Blair very quickly. Cullen still down. He beat two men on a great run. And Blair has been sent off as we send, see this replay. There's the challenge. Blair go 
going off. So South Melbourne has lost both their central defenders. Blair sent off over the wild challenge on Robbie Cullen. Sweeney's onside, faces Lomitz and puts it away first time. That's 3-1 to Juventus and Sweeney has scored his eighth goal for the season, his 19th in the National League. Well taken too. Holford. Peterson clears it short and Wade adds a bit of more power to it. Over the top goes Dowie and cleared by Lewis that time. Now Sweeney against Anazakis. Off the back of Anazakis' head. Here comes Sweeney. Holford too. And Holford gets it back to Lormetz. There's the final whistle. So Juventus has beaten South Melbourne Hellas, the reigning National League champions. The final score, Juventus 3, South Melbourne Hellas 1. And Hellas finishes the game with only 10 men after the sending off of Steve Blair. Earlier, of course, John Eisendorn had been injured and had to be replaced. But uh, certainly an excellent game here at Middle Park. Laurie Schwab at the microphone at Middle Park and a result which opens up the Southern Division where at least four teams are very much in the running for the top of the table.